Welcome back to another episode of Tractor Roy. My name is Trent. We're working on the WD-45 again today. Uh, I've already drained out the oil and coolant. That was the first step here. Uh, we're going to be working on this short block, seeing if we can get this thing freed up and see what's going on with it. So we're going to remove our grill and radiator and our water pump, the generator, just kind of open up this area so we can get access to the front cover of this thing a little easier. After that, we're going to pull out the oil pan take that out, see if we can see anything going on there with the bearings. Uh, when I drained the oil, there wasn't any water, no condensation. It didn't get any water past the rings down into the block. So, good news, because that probably means that our bearings aren't rusted. Our crankshaft should be salvageable. Uh, once we pull that off, we'll probably start popping the connecting rod bearing caps. Maybe try and get one and four out, because they should be easy. And then I'm pretty sure that two and three are going to fight us. But we're going to see what we can do. We might have to knock them, the sleeve and this piston out as a pair. They might be seized together. We'll just have to see when we get there. So, if you're just joining us on this thing, I have a playlist of all these that we're doing where we brought it in here, we pulled the head off, we kind of redid the head, went through it, so that should be good to go. Make sure to subscribe to keep up on it, and let's get started. Okay, so removing the generator, we just got these two bolts here that go into our frame rail, and we got the one bolt up here. I've already loosened them up, just so you don't see me fighting with them on camera. Uh, we're going to do a total rewire of this thing, so I'm just going to get rid of these. Actually, I'll just get rid of that wire completely so it's out of the way. Okay, our generator's off of there, and it's probably... It's not really in great shape, so I don't know if it even worked. Oh my gosh! Wow, that sounds terrible. Okay, wow, that belt looks fantastic too. Hmm. Oh, that's nice and crunchy. Nice and crunchy. Okay, I'm just going to cut this thing. You're not going to reuse that? I should, shouldn't I? Patina. <laughs> Oof. Wow, that thing is great. Yeah, a water pump isn't bad though. Yeah, it's been pretty good. Uh, I think that's probably what I'll take off next. Just two bolts here. Oh, three bolts. Two on the sides here. One on the bottom. And then I gotta take this hose off. And we'll take the fan off as one piece too. So, I'll see you when I have all that loosened up. Okay, all those are removed. Now we're going to take it off of my, my hose here. There. Water pump, fan assembly. So it opens up a lot of space in the front here, but I do want to take out this radiator core. So we got the bolts removed from right here and right there. How the grill attaches. So it should be right there. Boy, you can't see it. It's right back there. On both sides, there's a little rubber uh, isolation, vibration isolator. So I gotta try and get a wrench on that to get it loosened up and taken out of here. So I'm gonna loosen that up and then I'll be back. Okay, I finally removed it. So there's a, on the bottom of this radiator core support, there's welded nuts and then it bolts up from the bottom. Well, this side had cracked who knows how long ago and the welds broke loose so that capture nut was just spinning around. So I was able to finally wedge an open end wrench on it. And something to be said about Carlisle ratchets, I kind of like this one. I snapped the head of the bolts off. I had my full weight on the end of this handle. I've broken ugh, countless Craftsman ratchets. Just blew the gears out of them, probably like 15 or 20 of them. I've blown up a snap-on ratchet, and 
I've never, I've yet to do anything with this one. I've put cheater pipes on there. I've kind of gotten crazy with it. So for it being a Napa ratchet, I'm actually pretty impressed with this thing. So now remove this. Yeah, my wrench is still stuck in there too. I'll have to deal with that. I don't know, later. When we need the wrench. Yeah, when I need the wrench, I'll deal with that. <laughs> There's the front of this thing. Uh, I can't tell if I had a leaking front main seal or the timing cover or something with the governor, but there's a lot of grease and stuff going on there. It's kind of nasty. So I think now what I'll probably do, I'll have to look to see if that gasket set comes with all of this. Yeah, that probably does. I'm in here. I should probably do that. Probably take the oil filter canister off, reseal that because it was leaking at one point. I should probably just give this pretty thorough once over, but probably wait to take off this, uh, the governor here and the distributor drive here until I know what comes in those kits. So now I think I'm going to take off the oil pan. We'll pull it out, see what it looks like in there, and then I'll probably just put that oil pan back on with like a couple of bolts hand tight just to kind of keep dust out of it. Uh, the top's too late. So all I had to do was take a screwdriver here on the seal of it and smack it with the dead blow. Oh, I hope we can get this thing out. We should be able to. What are we hanging up on? Our inspection cover. Pretty much just our inspection cover. There's a front main seal. <laughs> so I kind of feel like, let me see where I can see it here. Yep. Somebody's been in this before, at least the oil pan, and this got put on crooked. See how it, the reference mark is way back here, but then it comes to the other side here and then goes back here. So this thing didn't sit straight. It sat probably about like that. So might have helped explain why we had so much freaking mess up there on the front of the engine. I guess that's trash, isn't it? <laughs> Not reusing that thing. Here's inside of our oil pan. Let's see what we can see. Let's see if there's any goodies in here. So we got, oh, it's just chunks of sludge. Yeah, there's a lot of material in the bottom that you can feel, but there's no big chunks. So normal wear is pretty, er, uh, bearing material coming off is, you know, pretty normal. Especially like on a fresh engine. Sometimes there's tolerances that kind of have to meet up with each other. So there's nothing that's outrageous in here. Especially after how old this engine probably is. So let's take a look up there. Okay, it's your first time under here as well as mine. Um, ooh, looks like we're a little low on the dipstick. Might need to add some more oil. Okay, looking under here, um, none of these bearings look like they're like super, they have a ton of junk on them. At least the bearing caps from the outside. So here's our front. Uh, so we have, looks like three main bearings. Here's the front, there's the middle. And the rear looks like it's our thrust bearing. The, so the thrust bearing is the widest one, which is this one, and it prevents the crankshaft from bouncing back and forth too much, uh, front to back, this direction. So the, the purpose of the main bearings 
is to keep the crankshaft from going this direction. The thrust bearing also controls this direction, but this direction as well. So four cylinders, so we've got four connecting rods. This is connecting rod, connecting rod, connecting rod, and connecting rod. Up there, you can see the bottom of piston number four. There's piston number one. And those are pretty, you can actually see, this is the liner that my finger is on. I mean, horrible lighting, but, so the piston is inside of the liner and the liner is right here. So this piston will go down a little bit farther. See, we're about halfway through the stroke. So this crankshaft is pretty well parallel to the ground when it's, when you have either or of the cylinders on uh, top dead center, bottom dead center, then this thing will be, you know, down here another couple inches. So that, so that piston will come out of the bore a little bit more. So I think what I'll probably do now, uh, what do I want to do? Uh, what I'll probably do first is I'll take off the connecting rod cap on one and four, and I'll probably get those pistons out because they should be freed up so I can slide them out. And then I'll deal with two and three after I've got one and four out because if I get one and four out then I could take two and three's rod caps here take them off and I can rotate this crankshaft so it's away from those and those things will be exposed so then I can take like a two by four from the top hit them down to break them loose and hopefully back up to take them out but I'll probably have to go down I might even have to hone that sleeve and then hit them back out I totally forgot to start filming so I took the uh, connecting rod cap off I've got two by four on the bottom of the piston. A rebuild kit comes with new pistons, so I don't really care if I damage that. I just want to save the connecting rod. But wood is softer than most steel and aluminum. So this is the one that we're starting to move. This oil smells super old. Yeah, it does. But it's oil. There we go. Okay. Hopefully this... Ooh. Yeah, that tank is... Well, yeah, we should be good. Okay, this is the one we're pulling out. I'm hitting it with a 2x4 so you'll just kind of see it start moving up. Hopefully, moving up. Let us know if it moves. Yeah, keep an eye on it and let us know when it comes out. I started splitting my 2x4 against the sleeve. I do. Great. You're about, I don't know, half inch from the top. Oh, let me change my angle. Oh. Hope it doesn't come in here. Yeah. It's starting to smell bad. Keep an eye out, we're going to have to chase this thing out of here. Is this moving? Yeah, yeah. Oh! Oh my gosh, it'll be even easier, a floor jack. <laughs> Why am I just now thinking about this? <laughs> Just tracking the little tractor out. There it goes. Oh, okay. Oh, am I still recording? Yeah, okay. Okay. We're back. And we're out. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Uh oh. <laughs> no, wrong way. <laughs> oh, that's kind of gross. I should really put on gloves, I guess. There we go. Ew. Oh, it's just dirty. Let me zoom out. Oh, that's the wrong out. There. Okay.
His rings look a little frizz. The top to two, three. The top three look pretty yeah. frozen. But it's no surprise. I mean, this thing was sitting for God knows how long. So, this is out. Wow, this, this looks good otherwise. Dang. Dang, that sucks. Okay, well anyways, this is pulled out. With a rebuild kit, you get new pistons. Ooh, where am I here? Okay. Well, this is out with a new rebuild kit. You get new pistons, uh, oil rings, or oil rings and compression rings. Pretty sure you even get new wrist pins. Yeah. So, these aren't going to be any good anymore, but they will make cool decorations. I've seen some pretty cool artwork where they make like little, little dudes out of them. Somebody takes a Dremel and carves them out. That'd be kind of cool. I don't know if I'm that artistic, but now that this one's out, I'll get one out, and then I'll probably bring you guys back to start working on two and three. Okay, one and four came out. I've disconnected the connecting rods here. Disconnected the connecting rods. Wow, that's a funny concept. <laughs> um, uh, and that crank was just turning like butter, so the issue is definitely these two being seized. Uh, these two move pretty freely, so it is for sure this. So I'm going to take my block of wood here. And I'm going to smack down because I have a bunch of junk here at the top. So if I can get it to go down, then I should be able to clean it up, scrape it up, do whatever. So then I can get it back out. They have to come out the top. It almost looks like, yeah, it almost looks like on these, if you had the crank out, you could go down. Uh, it doesn't look like one and four you could. Uh, most engines you have to come out anyway. So we're going to knock it down. So I've rotated this crank out of the way. So these connecting rods can go past the crank and we'll be just fine. Oh my god. Do you trust me to hold that? Sure. Just don't move it. What do I feel like that's moving? I don't think it was, but it felt like it was. So what I want to do is take a shorter block that's only like this tall it sits in there better. This won't last. We have to find something else. This is gonna suck. <laughs> this is gonna really suck. I think that'll be tall enough that the head will be tall enough. Oh, I was going to use this to hit the wood. Oh, okay. No, it's not tall enough. Whoa! Launches this thing out. That would mean that it's not moving. Whoops. How's this one? Good. Probably not. Why? Well, I was thinking if we could find some sort of like a small piece of metal we can hit in there to actually get some force through there. Yeah. And if you're not if worried I have about some, yeah. yeah, if you're not worried about hitting the liner anyways. No, because the liners come with the kit. This is my uh, bearing press setup. <laughs> That's a, a race that I welded on there because then you can press bearings. Like yeah. I think I built that for uh, rebuilding a differential like that was for the pinion bearing. Um safety glasses. Might be nice. I'll just squirt. I'll take out the claws. So I feel like I feel like this one's better. I don't know, maybe it'll come out better. Ooh. Whoa. I felt something move. It was a very dull thud, but I don't know if it was the threads on that thing or... We're moving. I got it to move. Oh my gosh, there's huge chunks in the top of it, like marks now. Let's try this one. Ow! There goes a bearing. What? <laughs> There's still one attached? 
That one came off a two. Which one would be just a two? Oh. No, you said this one came out of two. Oh, okay, then that one came out of three, my this bad. This one came yeah. out of three? Okay. Which one's which? This one's three. Let's on punch those real quick. This one's two. That one was two. Because that, that was the one you said that came out of two, and that was... Okay. We're golden. Oh yeah. Now we just gotta try and get it to go back out. Oh boy. Yeah, but I wonder if we can just take like that screw. Yeah, look at the top of these things. Yeah. They're, like. Well, I was meaning the rust from where it moved down. If you can, scrape. Ooh, that rush is pretty bad. I'm sure a hone probably wouldn't help us here. We'd have to hit it farther down, that's for sure. I could punch it down farther. I do have a hone. I don't know if that would actually help. Let's just try going back up the other way now. It's broke free now. Yeah. As soon as you broke it free, then it started wanting to move. Yeah. So, I think it's good enough to just throw the engine back together. I think so. Yeah. Let the rings do the work. Yeah. We'll let the rings hone it. We'll just change the oil a couple times. That's what breaking is, right? Is that thing moving? No, the tractor's looking up. Oh, I'm a bad angle. Oh, we could do that uh, if you pick up on it and shock it with that. See if it would like lift the tractor up, get some weight on it, and then. Oh, yeah. Okay, hammer time. Okay. Doesn't look like it. Hold on, where is this two by two going? <laughs> Is it moving? Oh, there it goes. That's one. Okay, for three. You still recording? Sure. Now you're to where? I think we're on the connecting rod. Oh. Wedged against the side of the sleeve. Pushing the piston back down and get it out. It did jump up way past where it was originally at. Just back and forth. Yeah. Tools. Probably took that out of my tool. Should be nice. Do you have a cylinder home? Should be nice if we had a an oil heater in here. Not a oh, burner. Please. <laughs> 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 Not even <so>. <laughs> 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 Yeah. 
No, I had one. No. Nice. It just broke. Did it? It did. Oh, you can feel you it right here. Frickin'. Can you? Yeah. Where it stops. Where what stops? Yeah. The piston. Oh, it's not bad now. Too bad I broke this and we couldn't <laughs> use it twice. <laughs> well, I think I've. I think we got it on this cylinder. It's just like the other one. one. Okay. Let's see if we can use what? Uh, oil your in there? Okay. WD or something? Maybe it'll slide by. It's pretty yeah. solid now. About the same spot. Hey. Oh, I think you got up a little higher though. See if you Ready? took my idea and okay. sprayed a little in there. Oh, it, it, it did move. Yeah, it moved. It moved. It's moving. It's not now. Now it's not. No. But it did. Oh, the whole, whole sleeve was coming out. That might just be what we have to do. You want to switch me? Sure. Arms getting tired. Oh, you pansy ass. <laughs> Put some tire lube in there. I know. Put your yeah. ass and spray <laughs> something tire. in there. Of all things that we could stick <laughs> in there, let's do tire lube. Let's do WD. For engine oil. Or... What? Do that. Is that damn? Is that any good? Probably wouldn't get bought. You got five gallons of grease over there. Yeah, what's just grease? Yeah. Like a grease hog. That's what it's grease is for. Oil. Well, we're going to use some PB black. Not a trans seal. Let's just seal it back up. Let's use some random stuff that we find <laughs> on the shelf. Alright. When it hits that. Okay. Ready? Yep. You I don't found it or jack it? Uh, found it. Okay, you gotta push it towards me though, the bottom. No. Oh. Like that. Ready? Yep. I'm taking the sleeve. Here, oh. you got the sleeve. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> oh, thanks for the language on camera. We're even recording that, Brady. <laughs> <laughs> standing here with a spear. Oh, oh my god! Oh, great! Oh. I think I said it's full of antifreeze. <laughs> oh, boy. oh! Well, that's how you pull out a sleeve. I guess that works. <laughs> Oh my god. My poor shot. <laughs> oh, it's a dirt floor. I'll just scrape it out. Oh. Are you okay? <laughs> yeah. Good? At least I didn't get the full run of it. Okay, so that's how you pull a sleeve in these. <laughs> it's got two O rings at the bottom to seal it, and then it has some packing at the top. Actually, that might just be. Maybe there's another O ring in the top? Yeah, that might just be compression. So. If you start getting antifreeze in your oil, and it's a sleeved engine, a wet sleeve especially, sometimes these start going bad, and that's how you get it in there. So that's... It could be a pitted liner too. Oh, yeah. Because those can capitate on the back side of the liner. Oh yeah, they can. Hole through it, yeah. Well, so, either way it's your liner, probably. Yeah. It could be a head gasket still, anyway. Something to look for. So there it is inside of there. There's the next sleeve. There's the next sleeve. There's our crank down in the bottom. Uh, oh yeah, you didn't see what happened. So, well, a few gallons of antifreeze just poured out of there when I pulled that thing up. I had drained it out, but obviously there was some in the block because you can't drain it all out. So, did either you, way. Did you uh, try draining it from here? No, because, yeah, well, no. But there's it's also other reasons. Now. Yeah. So... I'm going to call that a video. That's exactly what we wanted to see on this thing. We got the two easy pistons out. 
we're able to see, even though this thing was getting stuck, we couldn't hone it out uh, with my really cheap tool. So it was still hanging out here. So we popped out the sleeve, which whatever, because we'll just stick new sleeves in there anyways. So we've proven that we can do that. We've proven that the crank spins freely. Let's see, right there. It spins freely. We have that last piston in there, so that connecting rod might hit. But we won't have an issue with this. We don't have an issue with anything from these two pistons down anywhere else in it. The head's good to go now. So that gives us the green light for moving along on this thing. I wanted to make sure that our bottom end wasn't going to be all like rusted and just seized together and not going to be a good engine. But we're going to be okay on this. So make sure if you're not subscribed already, do that now so you can keep track of what we're doing here. Uh, like this video if you enjoyed it. I personally thought the antifreeze dumping on the ground was pretty good. Uh, so yeah, uh, thanks for watching Tractor Roy and I hope I'll catch you on the next one.